but I've been reading, uh, trying to read through the classics, you know, to get a little more culture into my life. And here's what I've discovered. I am an idiot. Um, I, reading the classics is hard. It's, it's all in English, and, uh, which is my native language. But I am struggling through the classics, and, and I don't know what happened. I don't know how we got from... That was the daily language, you know, that they, that they used in the 1800s and 1700s. I looked it up. Shakespeare had a working vocabulary of 54,000 words. 54,000 words in his working vocabulary. We, today, in the United States, have a working vocabulary of 3,000 words. That's why when we read Shakespeare, we're like, what light through yonder window? Does this come on a DVD? And it kind of put me under the pile a little bit, you know? And it kind of made me think, gosh, I'm not as, as sharp as I thought I was. If I'd have been born in the 1700s, presumably children had a bigger vocabulary than I had, which means I wouldn't even be able to recite fairy tales to kids because I'm not smart enough, you know? I'd have to be like, uh, in time past, though not long ago, there lived pigs in stature, little in number three, who, being of an age both entitled and inspired to seek their fortune, did set about to do thusly. When they had traveled a distance, pig numbered first spake, saying, Hearken, brethren, heed this tempestuous realm. Tarry we long from hearth and home. We shall fare, I fear, not well. <laughs> and so, being collectively agreed, but individually impelled, the diminutive swine set about each to erect for himself an abode. Pig number one did construct his house from straw. Pig number two did likewise, though rather not from straw, instead from sticks. <laughs> Meanwhile, unique in his imaginings, pig number three did erect as his domicile stalwart and garish, a structure made from brick entirely. Soon there happened along, as is frequently the scenario in classic tale of protagonist pig or red hooded child. <laughs> A wolf. Carnivorous nature in full season, he called out to the straw ensconced swine, saying, Pray thee, little pig, grant me entrance. But Pig One recalled with sage foreboding that he is mad who trusts in the tameness of a belly-pinched wolf and responded immediately, Nay, it shall not be, indeed, not by wit or whiskered jowl. Prepared for this most expected response, the wolf replied immediately, Then steal thyself, little pig. Forthwith shall I endeavor, by employing means both huffing and puffing, to dismantle yon flaxen fortress. <laughs> Whereupon there issued forth from the wolf an exhale of gale proportions, <laughs> that quickly rendered straw hovel to dregs and dross, and carried aloft piglet and shattered quarters both. Exposed now to claw and fang, Piglet One made haste, wolf in pursuit to the stick festooned sanctum of Peccary Secondary. <laughs> Causing Pig Two to cry out in dismay, Well, this knocks my knickers! <laughs> The marshalling of feral wolf to my doorstep is nowhere among those endeavors amenable or congenial. A thousand pardons squealed too. <laughs> One. <laughs> Twould seem the beast's baneful breath has purged me of home and sound judgment alike. <laughs> the mighty maelstrom of the wolf's exhale. Splattered second swine's shack and shortened his sanctimonious scolding simultaneously. Squealed one, 
While tis noble to contemplate tactical particularities, <laughs> pressed as we are with the time restraint, forbidding detailed strategical conversations, I would urge we run! Whether by their own fleet-footed competence or the wolf's windless attitude, the diminutive swine arrived at their ultimate kindred neighbor's inexpugnable brick ingress unscathed. <laughs> Upon the third pig's door, with urgent hooves they pounded, calling out, Unbar this entrance, and with haste we beseech thee! <laughs> the third pig hailed from the American colonies. and possessing a vocabulary substantially less robust than his impromptu visitors replied, say what? <laughs> Sink we sanctuary, they implored on the verge of hysteria, lest we fall forthwith to the ravenous appetency of yonder approaching carnivore. Still confounded by their importunate words, Pig 3 did render ajar his portal, whereupon 1 and 2 spilled through and collapsed beyond the threshold, enervated. <laughs> so y'all just wanted to come in? <laughs> you could have said that. <laughs> the sinister hiss of the wolf could once again be heard outside. Pray thee, pigs, grant me entrance. The wolf said 1 and 2. Wolf said three, what you suppose he wants? <laughs> he seeks to gain purchase within. Indeed, he would occupy this very alcove where he but afforded the most meager of opportunities. <laughs> right, I'm just gonna go ask him what he wants. <laughs> Under no circumstances, squealed two, flinging self bodily against the portal. There is not to be gained a costing external opponent, save our own immediate demise. What did you say about my mama? <laughs> House and occupants were again engulfed in a malevolent blast of wolfish wind. The foundation shook, the frame rattled, and lo, to the astonished eyes of Piglet and encroaching scoundrel alike stood the third pig's lodging undaunted. Good news for you pig fans. <laughs> Aghast and dismayed, Pig two, queried of three, how does against such relentless and torrential onslaught this domicile endure? Pig three puffed out chest, tapped a hoof to the hearth and responded, it's American made. 